The questions that artificial intelligence and the way in which it's growing now raise really interesting questions from a faith perspective. New technologies are forcing us to confront moral problems, ethical issues at a rate that is really unparalleled in human history. More than 1,300 tech industry leaders, researchers, and others are now asking for a pause in the development of artificial intelligence. We now have created beings, possibly, that can surpass us. We're seeing the big tech companies encroaching more and more on different aspects of human life. And this is an ethical concern. It's connected to justice, it's connected to human rights, it's connected to a lot of important themes, crucial for religions and also for civil society. Many religions understand themselves to be moral forces generally. What that means in a technological age is that there is a responsibility to become a moral force for all of the various moral issues that the new world is throwing at us, and that includes technological issues like artificial intelligence. Perhaps just like all technologies, it has a lot of potential for good. I think that we're going to be able to use these technologies to reduce mundane and boring work that is repetitive and, and which is not as meaningful in general as, as other types of jobs. And I think this is going to enhance human flourishing. What side is a uh... I think they become more knowledgeable. They get more information faster. So maybe future they should not need much school. So AI can potentially bring great benefits health-wise, climate change-wise, by working very quickly on huge data sets, be able to find solutions that we wouldn't get to on our own. So we can have all the knowledge of the past, all the wisdom of the past, that now are able to be communicated to every woman and man on the face of the earth in the language and in the level that they can understand. I think it's also possible to imagine a world where fields like medicine are completely revolutionized because AI has dramatically sped up the process by which we can discover life-saving drugs. This kind of revolution can democratize a lot of things that now are just, for the most part, the, the richest part of the world. Judaism looks very positively at technology and at creation. God places Adam in the Garden of Eden, and Adam is commanded to be able to take elements of the natural world and change it and shape it and improve the world. We in Judaism, we are partners with God, completing the work of creation. However, God commands Adam to, to guard it, to protect it, to be able to say, hold on a second, let's put a pause here. In a, in a religious sphere, we, we tend to link creativity with divine or with inspiration or with something that's really quite special. It's actually fascinating to see that in machines that we have made. Pope Francis often talks about putting the person at the center of technology. If your concept of the human person is a consumer, you know, I, I reduce the human being to what that human being consumes, uh, that's not good. Is your vision of, of the human being also transcendent in the sense that there are spiritual aspects that are even more important. And do you, as you are developing these tools, do you take that into account? So currently with technology, we are trying to create a utopia in the world by giving people what they desire. But this is misguided in that it is producing things that are antisocial and they are actually disintegrating the mental health of individuals. So when we consider the Islamic worldview, this world is not 
a utopia. In Buddhist most emphasize kind intelligence is helpful for everyone. So extremely intelligent technology with kindness, then technology will not harm to anyone. Technology will serve and help and guide everyone. Uh, otherwise, there's a big question. A lot of religious leaders feel really in the dark around these technologies. And because of that, there's often a feeling of, this is just not my area. I want to make the case that it actually really is. In part because there really is no other counterbalance to the developers themselves. I think faith-based leaders uh, can bring a, a broader perspective on the whole of humanity. They would bring a broader awareness of an ethical tradition and ethical decision-making. What it means to say nothing in the face of a technology that promises to be one of the most important developments and revolutions of our lifetime is to basically say my religious tradition is not interested in being a moral force on all matters, but only on particular matters. And what that does is basically dooms a religion to what I call ethical obsolescence. Some of the ways in which artificial intelligence uh, is beginning to operate could inhibit human flourishing in areas such as the future of work, both with increased automation and the fact that the economic effects of increased automation are going to fall very unevenly across the population. So the economic questions are really significant and, and how the workforce is retrained and other economic opportunities created is going to be really critical. Now we are at the scenario where we can ask AI systems to generate fake historical images. Fake articles. You can create elaborate conspiracy theories and ask AI to generate supporting evidence, including generating whole books which cite each other, including photographic evidence. So then the question will be, who are people going to trust? Can democracy even survive if such a technology is unleashed? I think the problem is going to be malevolent actors. What happens when we get a huge state-sponsored AI that has no scruples, that has no standards, that has no guidelines whatsoever? That, that's scary. One of the big questions is the alignment problem. Do we make sure that, that artificial intelligence is actually achieving the goals that humans want to have happen, or is artificial intelligence going to have its own goals that may be in contradistinction and maybe even destructive of what humanity wants? In my mind, the, the, the most danger is nihilism. And nihilism and technology if combined together, then all become ash. I think we are going to see multi-faith work around technology, which looks unlike anything that we have seen in the past, because it is coming out of this place of real interfaith, multi-faith grappling around these core ideas. Mi invito pertanto nelle vostre deliberazioni a fare della dignità intrinseca di ogni uomo e ogni donna il criterio chiave nella valutazione delle tecnologie emergenti. We propose the creation of an alliance between technology companies and leaders representing most of the religions and ethical traditions of the world. So let us work together to ensure that AI is used in a way that benefits all of humanity and respects the dignity of every person.
what is inside uh, this call? First of all, we are looking at three impact areas, that is ethics, education uh, and, uh, and rights. The first one is the transparency. Uh, an AI system should be understandable to all. The second one is the inclusion. The system are, must not discriminate against anyone because every human being has equal dignity. The third one is the accountability. There must always be someone who take responsibility for what the machine does. The fourth is the impartiality. All AI system must not follow or create biases. The fifth is reliability. AI must be reliable. And the sixth is security and privacy. The system must be secure and respect the privacy of users. We found that those principles are really interreligious and also intercultural. This knowledge must be used in ways that serve the good of humanity. I think we have to think seriously about the dangers of AI, what people are going to do, and then also cui bono, who benefits from artificial intelligence? Who benefits from it? When we eliminate all these jobs. These machines, this technology, would never be able to see through the eyes of the human person, to hear his voice, to feel the cry, of the poor man to look his desperate eyes with the heart of a person. It is not just a uh, sign and forget paper. At the end of every year, we ask to the signatories to give us a little uh, report on the way in which AI and AI ethics are working together. So you sign at the wrong call for AI ethics. Is this changing in some way your behavior? Is changing in some way the way in which you use or produce AI. Historians may subsequently look back and look at 2023 as a momentous year for technology. My Lords, we're at a pivotal moment in the development of AI. As others have said, there's immense potential for good and immense potential for harm in the new technologies. I, I hope that there is sufficient strength of will in governments to provide a strong mediating influence on the big technology companies to enable the benefits of these technologies to be released without the potential harms that could come through them. I think that we, we will make the choices to be moderate and responsible. Uh, as we have done with nuclear, not that we're out of the woods there yet, but we have reined ourselves in. I think we can behave that way again. Because there is something inside the human heart that every one of us has, that is the place where the ethics arise, uh, make me confident that things will not happen without someone that asks to himself, is that right? What gives me the most hope is if we are careful and if we use technology in the right places, it can alleviate a lot of human misery, it can cure people, it can even enable larger access to knowledge. And one of the byproducts of studying artificial intelligence is an even deeper awe and respect for human beings as conscious beings with multiple intelligences, emotional, intellectual, musical, and artistic. It's too early to say whether religious traditions around the world will ultimately come to one idea about how we ought to relate to AI. We may not fully agree on all of those things, but there's more commonality than difference between religions when it comes to the fundamental things about what enables flourishing, what enables us to live the meaningful, purposeful lives that we're called to live.